of Crypto Pyre. I am your host, Tyler Edders. We are working on a pie hole tonight. A pie hole is a uh, nifty little device that locks tabs and trackers at a network level so you don't have to use ad blockers on your on every device you own um called a pi hole because it's based on a raspberry pi so we have a raspberry pi right here which we'll be using uh we're gonna be going from the very top so we'll be installing um we'll be setting up the raspberry pi from the beginning uh and then installing the Pi Hole software, and then going as far as we can until we get to the configuring the router part of the task. Um, because, yeah, that would end the stream if we did that. Um, yeah, so we're at the raspberrypi.com website right now. Um, if you don't have one, uh, I think these are pretty cheap. These are out of stock for a while from all the supply chain issues. Um, it's a computer, neat. Uh, how much are these these days? These are... So you can get a full kit. Um, 93 pounds. Not sure what that translates to in dollars. It's, it's about a hundred bucks, I think. Uh, this is, comes with the key. Oh, this is the keyboard version. There's actually a computer inside this keyboard. Um, the one I'm using right now is like a little standalone. Um, anyways, I'm not a Raspberry Pi salesman, uh, but part of their mission is that they just want to make computers accessible and affordable. And yeah, this is basically what we're working with tonight. Um, $35. Uh, base i mean th this is an entire computer for 35 dollars. it's got a cpu power supply hdmi ports usb ethernet um, and then it takes an sd card so we are going to start with the sd card so um I've got the SD card plugged in right now. We can see um, through the volumes right here. So we're gonna format this and just take it from the very top. Uh, so I'm in disk utility. This is the Mac OS disk utility. I'm going to erase. Um, I think it's okay if it's Mac OS extended. Uh, there's always a bunch of options in here for how you want to format your media. Um, I'm just gonna start with this and if we need to redo it, we can. Hey folks in chat. Happy St. Patty's Day. Cheers. Oh, I erase process has failed. That's a great way to start the stream. Currently unmounted. <laughs> Label my partition to savage. <laughs> wow. 
Why didn't this... Couldn't be unmounted because its process is in use. By what? All right, well, we're gonna eject and try to... There aren't more processes using it, that's a lie. The SD card have a lock switch on it? I don't think so. It's just a micro SD card. Very strange. That figures out what, um, what it's doing with its life. Let's go ahead and download the necessary software for setting up the Raspberry Pi. Um, so to get started, you need a few things. Monitor, we've got that. Uh, keyboard, we've got that. Mice, great power supply. So all that's already hooked up. Um, all right, so here's a good part, installing the operating system. Uh, Raspberry Pi recommend the use of the Raspberry Pi imager to install the operating system on your SD card. Great. So I am on a Macintosh personal computer. So just downloaded this, gonna drag it into applications. We're going to trust this because we just downloaded it we know what it is. I wonder if I actually have to erase the SD card or if I can just um, blow over it with this tool here. Yeah, I don't know why disk utility is failing, but... Alright, so we just want to go with the standard Raspberry Pi OS 32-bit. A port of DB and Bullseye with the Raspberry Pi desktop recommended. Um, you have a whole other series of options here. Uh, so here's our SD card. All right, let's see if it works. I wonder how long this will take. Well, that appears to be working, so that's good. Right, so while that's going, let's go take a look at the Pi Hole website. 
Yeah, so network wide network wide ad blocking is the promise. Uh, you can run PyHole in a container or deploy it directly to a supported operating system via our automated installer. So we're working on installing the supported operating system right now. Um, install PyHole. Use PyHole as your DNS server. Uh, DNS stands for Domain Name Service. And that's what essentially connects your URL that you type into your browser with the IP address of whatever resource that website's being served from. And there's you can get really fancy with it. Um, block ads everywhere, even on the go. So you can combine your pie hole with a VPN and have ad blocking on your phone. Uh, which is really cool. Um, I actually first heard about the pie hole from uh, 100 Rabbits. So, Devin and Rekka are two of my heroes. They live on a sailboat and they sail around the Pacific and make software and art and um, blog about it and make videos about it. But they actually have a pie hole because energy is a really important concern for them because all their energy is solar power. So, uh, they have it set up as like a a vital part of their survival tool belt because it's every every drop of electricity that's spent matters so if the electricity is being spent on um, serving them ads and tracking them uh, that's not a good use of electricity so yeah that's how I heard about it um, I bought a Raspberry Pi not too long ago with the intention of setting this up and um, I think it's finally time in no short in no small part to the current events just with the cyber war that's going on right now um, there's just so much I don't know I've yeah this dream isn't exactly about infosec and opsec even though it bleeds over into it but I just Any measure I can take to help secure my information, I'm going to do. All right, so the imager is done writing. Now it's verifying. This should be faster than the write took. And it looks like you all are not getting the music either. The stream is uh, streams off to a rough, rough and tumble start. So it says it's going through, but Streamlabs is reporting no audio. Weird. And then the chat's not showing up. Wow, that's great. Okay, so let's uh, just keep going into the pie hole requirements. Um, I don't know if I want to use Docker or not. Uh, I kind of just want to... All right, so here's the GitHub page for pie hole. Um, pie hole is a DNS sinkhole that protects your devices from unwanted content without installing any client-side software. Easy to use, resolute, responsive, lightweight, robust, all, all of the good adjectives. A DNS sinkhole, also known as a sinkhole server, internet sinkhole, or black hole DNS, is a DNS server that has been configured to hand out non-routable addresses for a certain set of domain names. Computers that use a sinkhole fail to access the real site. The higher up on the DNS resolution chain the sinkhole is, the more the request will fail because a greater number of the lower NS servers that in turn serve a greater number of the clients. So it's essentially a really clever way of 
I suppose it's you, you could call it exploiting the way the internet works, but a bunch of really smart people figured out how ads work and DNS works and made a way to make this you know trap essentially for your ads and your your trackers. Um, <laughs> sinkholes can be used both constructively and contain threats such as WannaCry and Avalanche, and just destructively, for example, disrupting DNS services in a DOS attack. Uh, so a DOS attack, for those who don't know, is denial of service. That's where you um, essentially use a whole series of bots to request one website or one resource, you know, en masse, so tens of thousands of requests coming in, and it crashes the site and makes it inaccessible for other folks. One use is to stop botnets by interrupting the DNS names. The botnet is programmed to use for coordination. Another is to block ad serving sites, which is what we're doing, uh, either using a host-based sinkhole or locally running a DNS server. Cool, so it looks like, looks like we're done. Um, I guess let's plug it into the Raspberry Pi and see if it works. Uh, okay, so I just plugged the SD card into the Raspberry Pi and we're going to power it on. Uh, Safari on its own does a really great job of preventing cross-site tracking and on a per-page basis will give you a report of exactly what's trying to track your said page. Their private relay stuff is really interesting. Interesting. I've I stopped using stopped. I never really started using Safari. I um Apple makes a lot of design and technology choices for me that I don't necessarily agree with. So I typically shy away from like, you know, native Apple stuff like Safari or Mail or anything like that because I feel like it, uh, it's very opinionated with how it works. But that's good to know that they're doing that. Um, I've always been really pleased with Apple's just, you know, general Pro privacy advocacy that they do. All right, so we've got this. This is a small um, HDMI uh, screen from Adafruit. Uh, it's actually a touch screen too, which is kind of fun. But this is just plugged into the Raspberry Pi. Um, so the whole computer is just right here. It's like the size of a cigarette box. Okay, cool. So it worked. Yay. Uh, welcome to Raspberry Pi Desktop. Before you start using it, there are a few things to set up. Press next to get started. We are in the United States. Our time zone is Los Angeles. We're English. There's a US keyboard. Words not working. Um, so I had a password I wanted to use for this. Um, so. so now it's prompting us to change the password. The default password on Raspberry Pis is a uh, Raspberry. Um, should always set your own password. Uh, that's just some setup stuff. We are wired to Ethernet, so we don't need Wi-Fi. Uh, so there's a software update, which is kind of surprising because we just got a brand new image. 
but that's fine. So we'll let that do its thing. Let's see if I can fix the contrast here. It's kind of rough. That's all right. So it's downloading updates right now. Um, whenever I do a project like this, it's really important to me to just start fresh. Um, I almost didn't format the SD card and reinstall the OS, but I just like the peace of mind knowing that it's whatever I was hacking on before or whatever I was messing around with is gone. Um, it removes possible vectors of just misconfiguration or mistakes or who knows what I was doing on this last time. Certainly not me. All right, while that's going, um, One step automated install. That sounds really nice. Unless you want to get started quickly and conveniently, you may install PyHole using the following command. Uh, that sounds pretty great. Alternate install methods. Uh, clone the repo and run. You might do that just for just for funsies. Manually download the installer and run. Use Docker. Yeah, I, I don't want to use Docker just because it's another component to install. Um, I like Docker, I use it every day at work, but uh, it's just another piece to potentially break. All right, our updates are still going. Yeah, let's let's look at the private relay stuff. And Williams, uh, I'm not familiar with how that works. Looks like this update's going to take another three or four minutes. <clears throat> Normally, when you browse the web, information contained in your web traffic, such as your DNS records and IP addresses, can be seen by your network provider and the websites you visit. Uh, this information could be used to determine your identity and build a profile of your location and browsing history over time. Uh, I do have an iCloud subscription. Uh, iCloud Private Relay is designed to protect your privacy by ensuring that when you browse the web in Safari, no single party, not even Apple, can see both who you are and what sites you're visiting. So is this like Tor, but <laughs> Tor, but for normies. <laughs> it's the, uh, when private relay is enabled, your requests are sent through two separate secure internet relays. Your IP address is visible to your network provider and to the first relay, which is operated by Apple. Your DNS rec records are encrypted, so neither party can see the addresses of the website you're trying to visit. The second relay, which is operated by a third party content provider, generates a temporary IP address decrypts the name of the website and connects you. All this is done using the latest internet standards. Huh. Wow, it's really great. It's really great that they put R&D money into a product like this. 
Yeah, you're right. It is part of the iCloud subscription. <laughs> Not available in all countries. Oh, Russia. Oh. Uh, it's currently in beta in iOS 15 and iPad OS 15. Honorary. You can have it generate an IP for your locale or elsewhere. It's on iPhone and Mac OS. That's really cool. Didn't know about that. Uh, it's interesting that it has to work on Safari. I wonder if there's like a technical reason for that or if that's more walled garden Apple bullshit. I mean, I guess if, if they wanted it to work with other browsers, they'd have to develop extensions, and that's a whole product bloat issue. Because then they're like, oh, we have a Firefox extension and a Chrome extension and an Internet explain And that's not, you know, that's not part of Apple's vision they want. I mean, I'm, I'm critical of their walled garden model, but it does have its advantages when it's aligned with topics like privacy, I think uh, you get a lot of really good benefits there. Yeah, it originated on iOS and later made it to the Mac. Cool. Oh, I wonder if, can we just like turn it on? Is this like, how do you do that? only has instructions for iOS oh, on your Mac Some preferences yep there it is iCloud private relay keeps your internet activity private it hides your IP address and browsing activity in Safari yeah It's so funny, like, you do all that reading and you fucking, like, turn it on and then you, you you don't actually, like, see it anywhere. I don't know, I mean, uh, what website should I get? Like, how do we even test this? Can you test this? I guess that's what maybe this is. Yeah, wow. 32 trackers. <laughs> Let's go to uh, rt.com. <laughs> rt.com would like to send you notifications in Notification Center. No, thank you. Oh my god. What a fucking dumpster fire. 39 trackers. Oh no, only 12 here. Analytics. AOL. Where? Where where's AOL? <laughs> they still around AOL a Time Warner company. What a world. Yeah, and like, the thing is, if you haven't been like, privacy pilled, and uh, people just think you're crazy. They think you're paranoid or selling drugs or a porn addict if you're interested in this stuff. And it's actually like, 
it's not it's about it's about having like dignity as a human being you know you you hear those stories about uh women who get pregnant and the algorithm like figures it out and fucking doxes them to their family or friends inadvertently before they are ready to share the information and it's like there is real human damage that occurs from this stuff that's not you know that's totally disconnected from any illicit or taboo uses of the internet uh m williams do what's my ip or whatever to test relay yeah let's do it um so according to safari that is rip and according to yeah according to brave which i use brave for everything because it is uh i use brave and DuckDuckGo. um i switched like four years ago, three years ago, I haven't looked back. But so in Safari, our public IP is this. And in Brave, um, it's this. So it's working. Wow, that's really cool. <laughs> and Williams, I was just typing that story. Yeah, I mean, that's like the, it's horrifying. Like what a, uh, and e even, um. Asian eyes. She, she was just sick for a few days and she was getting Mucinex because she needed it for her symptoms. And now she's got Mucinex ads following her everywhere. And it's fucking wild because I went to Walgreens and bought it, but somehow they knew and she's seeing ads everywhere she goes now for it. It's just, it's just really, really, and it's, it's like a frog in a pot of boiling water thing, you know, like you don't, it's like, oh, it's, it's just a little thing. Like, it doesn't really matter. But no, it like, these things add up. And over time, you don't realize how much of your privacy has been eroded. All right, so systems up to date. Neat. Uh, Raspberry Pi is ready to go. Wants us to restart. Let's restart. Um, I think we're going to do the uh, clone repo and run. Um, yeah, uh, so they're, it's funny, like they offer this one step automated install, but then they immediately critique as to why this is not great to do. So I can elaborate on this a little bit. Um, I'll zoom in because I just realized how small this probably is for you all. So, so curl retrieves, the, uh, retrieves data from a URL. Um, we've got some options here. So we're curling install pihole.net and then piping it into bash. Bash is the shell that lets you run commands at a lower level on your computer. This is really dangerous to do because you're just, you're kind of like blindly, <laughs> it's, it's kind of like going to a party and someone just gives you some drugs and says, here, take these. And you just take them without asking what they are or what the dose is. Uh, is exactly what this is doing. You're just trusting that whatever's here is something you want to install and run on your computer. This is a little different because you are cloning it and then you have the opportunity to actually look at the files and inspect them before you install it. So I think it's just better practice to get in the habit of doing a couple extra steps just to make sure, especially when you're working on a piece of privacy technology like this. So this is what we're gonna do. Um, so back over to our buddy here. Yeah, and this is, I'll try to fix the camera. I'll zoom in even more. Um, there you might be able to see it a little bit better. Um, but, okay, so we are, well, first let's see if Git's installed. I imagine it is, but, okay, Git's installed, good. Git clone. 
Dex one. Now we're going to CD into PyHole. CD stands for change directory. And then we are going to uh, just look at it. Uh, yep, the files in there are what we expect to see. And then we're going to run the basic install as sudo, which is super user do. Oh, that's cool. So we're going to see a bunch of data as this installs. This installer will transform your device into a network wide ad blocker exclamation point. Okay. It's free with hard by your donations. You should donate. Okay. The server. So it needs a static IP address to function. Uh, all right, so it says choose yes to indicate you understood this message. Um, we do understand that there's more steps we need to take, which are all outlined on the website. Um, it doesn't just magically work. There's a bunch of extra stuff we need to do. Um, choose an interface. We're going to use ethernet. The other option is WLAN. Uh, do you want to use your current network settings as a static address? Yeah, that's fine for now. Uh, just potential warning. All right, select upstream DNS provider to use your own select custom. Um, I don't really, all right, so I definitely don't want to use Google. Uh, I use, there's a Cloudflare option, and I don't know if any of you out there have a different recommendation, but I use Cloudflare's 1.1.1.1 um, uh, app on my mobile devices. Um, so I trust them and I, I use Cloudflare uh, professionally as well. Um, ooh, and they're, they're uh, what, nine milliseconds faster than Google supposedly. So yeah, we're just gonna use them as our DNS provider. Pi-hole relies on third-party lists in order to block ads. Uh, you can use the suggestion below and or add your own. Okay, that's fine. Do you want to install the admin interface? Yes, I definitely do. Do you wish to install the web server and require PHP modules? Uh, yeah. Whenever I do this type of thing for the first time, I always, pretty much always default to whatever the defaults and recommendations are. And they're, they're really helpful here. I know it's kind of hard to see, but they have recommended for most of these options. And I'm just gonna trust those and just go with what the recommendations are. Uh, select a privacy mode. Uh, not really sure what that means. Show everything, hide domains. I wanna show everything. I don't need to hide anything right now. Just trying to block ads. 
All right, so we get some more output here. Installing good old PHP personal home page or uh what's the other backronym it was? Um <laughs> PHP is a recursive acronym. It's uh it's kind of like an inside industry joke. A, a recursive acronym means the um the acronym contains another acronym that's the same inside it. Uh, I forget what PHP was. Yeah, <laughs> PHP stands for PHP Hypertext Preprocessor. So the P in PHP stands for PHP. Uh, now you know. Alright, so we're still installing packages. I'm really sorry about the music, everyone. I uh, don't know why it's not coming through. You could crank it more. Oh, I guess it's always been there. It's just been quiet. Oh, weird. All right, so installing PHP 7.4, enabling light HTTPD. Trying to know what some of these things are. Um, I'm not going to pretend I know it all anymore. So this is kind of, I think, might be the end of the stream because after this, um, we have this step here, which is once the installer has been run, you need to configure your router to have DHCP clients use PyHole as their DNS server. And let's learn what DHCP is. So DHCP. CP stands for Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. Uh, it's a network management protocol for automatically assigning IP addresses and other communication parameters to devices connected to the network using client-server architecture. So my um, limited understanding of DHCP is essentially, if you want to connect to the internet, you've got to have an IP address if it's for your phone or your computer or your PlayStation 4 or your PlayStation 5 or your Switch or whatever, every single thing needs an IP address. And DHCP automatically assigns those IP addresses to your devices. So what the Pi Hole does is it takes over that responsibility of automatically assigning the IP addresses and it uses them it, it, it uses that responsibility as a way to um, add these layers of security for you. Uh, I, I am really curious how this actually works. Like, what did they do to... Like, what's the technology under the hood that makes this happen? All right, so installation complete. We did it. Um, configure your devices to use PyHole as a DNS server using IPv4, IPv6. If you've not done so already, the above IP should be set to static. Great, awesome. So from here, um, the next steps are basically to 
follow the instructions on this page, which I got to from, um, so again, here, here's the GitHub page. Let's post some chat. Uh, we installed it using method one, and then here's where we have to unplug the Raspberry Pi, take it over to the router, plug it into the router, and then configure the router to use it as the uh, DNS server. Um, because right now the Raspberry Pi is just plugged into a switch on my desk, which is plugged into the router on the other side of the apartment. Um, and then this page has detailed steps for how to configure it, um, which again, I can't do on stream because it requires essentially breaking my internet for a period of time. Uh, and I'm not, I'm not elite enough to have two independent air-gapped internet connections just yet. I'm getting there though. Um, so there's three different ways to do this. Uh, Log into your router's configuration page. So these are the, this message is what this screen is telling us to do. Um, this is giving us the IP address that we're going to want to use as a static IP address here. So it should be a matter of essentially logging into the router, typing in the IP address, uh, checking some boxes, And that should be it for the basic setup. So it's, I don't know, we had to roll up our sleeves a little bit, but it's pretty, it's pretty streamlined. So yeah, I think um, that's about it for tonight. Uh, thanks for hanging out, everyone. Um, Privacy is cool. <laughs> Information security is cool. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's an interesting and unsettling world we're in right now. And one of my favorite quotes is from Marshall McLuhan, um, about World War III. Uh, pull it up because I know. So, World War III is a guerrilla information war with no division between military and civilian participation. Marshall McLaurin, Cultures Our Business, 1970, 52 years ago. Um, I just think it, Things are going to get more interesting before they get less interesting. Um, I'm thanks that uh, I know not what World War Three will be fought with, but I know World War Four will be fought will be fought with sticks and stones. He was, of course, alluding to nuclear holocaust or biological weapon holocaust happening in World War Three. But I mean, I I feel like, especially since I don't know, maybe maybe Snowden. 2013 was kind of a, a watershed moment, and uh, Anonymous was really active then as well. Um, since then, we've definitely been in an information cold war, and it got cranked up several notches with the election in 2016, and then now it's cranked up even more with the Russia-Ukraine situation. Um, if you want to research, you know, uh, Sandworm, uh, which is the infamous uh, Russian cyber warfare unit. And, um, you know, of course, An Anonymous has kind of made some resurgences recently, but uh, there's a lot of really wild stuff going on. And I don't know, I think it's important to protect yourself and protect your family. Um, The deepfake stuff from today? 
I missed that. What ha uh, what happened? <laughs> uh, deep fake. Oh man. Oh my god. Deep fake footage purports to show Ukrainian president capitulating. No way. No way. <laughs> so we just um, made a deep fake for uh, the science fiction film I'm working on. Um, it's really easy. Uh, I mean, by really easy, that's, that's not to diminish the work of Mike who, who, who made it. Um, the tools are out there, they're open source. All you need is a corpus of material. You just need a few videos, some audio samples, some photos. You dump it all into some code and it spits out a deep fake. Uh, apparently this was a poorly done one, but yeah, I mean, I'm I'm curious what, what has been deep faked that we all think is still true or you know hasn't um been revealed as being a deep fake yet man thanks for sharing that i know who yeah and then millions thanks for watching uh really appreciate it and 5150 we trust definitely appreciate you here uh you got a baseball cap on you might appreciate um <laughs> didn't know you'd be here but this is my favorite hat Cool. Well, thanks everyone. This concludes Crypto Pyre. Uh, I'll be back next week, Thursday. I think I'm going to do an analysis of Bloodborne or Elden Ring user interface and user experience. I've been playing a ton of Elden Ring and overall their UI is really excellent, um, but I definitely have some critiques of it. Uh, mainly around things like, um, like if, if you select an item and you want to use it, like use is selected first which is good but then like use selected is right below it which is really confusing because in other Soulsborne games it's called use multiple but there's a lot of really good things they do to prevent you from accidentally screwing yourself over and i think it's really cool to talk about that stuff but then there's a lot of anti-patterns they have as well like sometimes yes is highlighted as default and no is the one you need to move to and sometimes no is highlighted as default and yes is the one you need to move to so stuff like that i think it's interesting to analyze and think like was this because of a conscious decision like did, did they really want to do that or was it just sort of an emergent thing and try to like suss out the, the rationale behind it but it's it's very complicated ui in both games and it's um i don't know it's, it's obviously topical all right, cool. Thanks, everyone. Really appreciate you. See you next time.